It's Rivals Day at Locked On Chiefs. Who would you take from everybody else in this division that might actually help you make it that much more dominant? The Chiefs have been on an epic run. How can they get better today on Locked On Chiefs? From the land of the free and the home of the Chiefs, this is the Locked On Chiefs podcast. Welcome back, everybody. We appreciate you making us your first listen. Check out another Lockdown show for your next listen. It may be one of the division rivals since we're going to be talking about them quite a bit today. We're brought to you by FanDuel. It's where you can get the best deal going on a no sweat first bet. Check them out at fanduel.com slash locked on. We are going to enter the silly season here as we wait for training camp. We're going to get into some more creative type topics, and that's what we're doing today. How would you make this team better by hurting everyone else in this AFC West division? That's where we're going. I'm Ryan Tracy, the founder of Rogue Analytics and Performance Consulting, NFL33.com, and RGR Football. And I'm Chris Clark from Chiefs Corner, and I really love this topic because I think it can be both a little bit heady as you're taking from divisional (laughs) rivals and (laughs) fun considering, think of the added players you can add to your team. Uh, So I actually, I'm really looking forward to the show, and I'm really looking forward to talking about this with you. But before we talk about that, if you want to get in on, on texting us, you can text us at 816-357-8781. Text us who you would like from a divisional rival. And before we get into the actual conversation of who you would take, I do want to set it up a little bit saying we're talking players, generally speaking, that are going to be over a career, not just for a season. And that becomes a very key point when you start looking at these rosters. It certainly does. Roster building is what this is about. And you have to recognize talent within your your division because the coaching staff has to. They have to game plan around who is the guys that can hurt us the most when we play the Chargers, the Broncos, and the Raiders. And I think at this evolution of what the AFC West has become, I think it, it does go to show you that there is talent elsewhere. It's a lot about utilization, about how just how well they play. So – you could take somebody and slap them in a completely different situation with a different coaching staff and expect to get uh, a similar result, but in varying degrees uh, of difference based on what you're asked to do. And that's what the experiment here is. And again, while we're waiting for the Chris Jones contract and we're waiting for a training camp to come, we can get into some of these scenarios that are a little bit silly because we have no news. And if, if you're somebody who's looking for diehard news, come back tomorrow and the next day and the next day because we're here five days a week. And we try to cover everything that we can. Some fun topics during uh, June and July just have to be done because it's the only time during the year we can do it because we're X's and O's and hardcore stats the rest of the year. So to kick it off, we will start with those Los Angeles Chargers. And there's a lot of ways that you can go here. But in the end, when you look at what the Chiefs have and you look at the one or two things you can maybe take and take away from them uh, to put on the Chiefs roster, for me, it's really simple. Uh, a veteran leader, somebody who can get something done at the position. It's not much of a conversation for me. It's Joey Bosa, despite the injuries and everything else. If you were to grab him, and, and you know maybe he, he you know wants out of his contract in, in a year or something like that, it would still be the scenario that you'd have a guy with a ton of experience, uh, a power-based game that I think actually helps George Karloftis in particular, and may be able to bring along Felix and DK uh, Uzama in terms of the run game support and being able to sustain hold the point like I think those are good additions that you could get from a leader that's within the room that go beyond just what Joe Cullen teaches and how the coaching staff can affect that so if I was going to drop one player from the Chargers onto the Chiefs roster that's probably who it would be yeah and I would agree with you I think that that's a great pick I have somebody else in mind and I should have specified this earlier we're not taking into account salary cap because there's no way to do yeah. that. So just just know that that's being thrown out the door. We realize that that's probably not realistic with Bosa, uh, but we're looking at what player would make the Chiefs better that we could bring onto the roster and would really hurt the Chargers. That's one of them. <laughs> uh, for me, though, I'm not going to look at a veteran. I'm going to look at a younger guy. I'm going to look at a guy that they drafted just a couple years ago in Rashawn Slater. I think that if you plug him in on this line – and you put him next to, you know, Joe Tooney, uh, who may be here just a couple more years, but you put him in the same line with Creed Humphrey and Trey Smith, that's going to be a phenomenal offensive line. And then you've got to figure out left guard maybe in a couple of years, and you've got to figure out right tackle, although it seems like right tackle is probably already taken care of with Jawan Taylor. So 
Mm-hmm. I think you're in a great position if you bring in a guy like Rashawn Slater to this roster because it's solidifying the one place on that offensive line where you still have a little bit of a question mark. I don't have a question mark at any of the other four spots. Left tackle is mainly because Donovan Smith, you don't know what you're going to get. And even if Donovan Smith plays well this season, he's not going to be a long-term answer. Slater yeah. Can be. And, and that's absolutely fair. Now, Slater was a guy that, that came in a little unheralded. He's got the arm length issue, much like Joe Tooney does, that have outplayed what, what – the, the talking heads in draft circles thought they were going to be able to do. And he's overcome that. And I think that's a perfectly legitimate steal. If you're going to steal something from them, hurt it where it hurts most. It's a quarterback driven league that does affect every quarterback. So I, I like your selection there. I do want to give just a little asterisk shout out there that uh, Jamari Sellier is a, a guy that I would look at as well because he yep. can be a left tackle. He can certainly be a left guard of the future. I think they have him slated at right guard now, but when uh, Slater had the injury, it was Sawyer that came in and played those left tackle snaps. So uh, I will give that organization credit. They've done a much better job in the last three drafts of getting talent on further offensive line than they have in the last 20 years. So at least they started to figure that part out. It's not uh, the overhaul that the Chiefs have done, but it's going in the right direction. Yeah, and I just want to throw out a little bit of a twist. Just imagine if you took away one player from the Chargers who would hurt them the most that maybe Kansas City doesn't even need. Who would you take? <laughs> well, my point is to build the Chiefs up, not to just necessarily destroy the the opposition, but I see where you're going. <clears throat> so who would you who take? Who would you take? And <laughs> I wouldn't. What, who would you take? So if I'm just looking at destroying the Chargers, I think you take Justin Herbert. Doesn't matter that you have Mahomes. <laughs> okay. The Chargers so you're, don't. You have the most elite backup in the history of backups. Okay. <laughs> right. Well, not only that, but you basically take away any divisional chance of losing the division, I think, in 2023. True. That's really where I'm coming from with that selection is what do the Chargers have behind him? Stick Easton. Max, yeah. Max Duggan. Yeah, yeah, not a whole lot there. So I, I see if you're out to just destroy the other AFC West teams, yeah, I get where you're going. Okay, we're gonna have to do that for the others. I'll, I'll be interested to see what you say there too. Um, <laughs> next up, we're gonna pick apart the Denver Broncos, who may be the team out of these three uh, that has the biggest chance to take a step forward. Uh, we'll talk about the Raiders in the last segment as well. But if you're betting on which order this group is gonna finish in, you can do that at FanDuel. It's uh, it's baseball season right now. We all know that. You can get into the action there, but we know that football is right around the corner. And now's the chance to do it. If you sign up as a new user with FanDuel.com, uh, America's number one sports book, you can get a no-sweat first bet, which means you make a bet and your first bet loses, you are eligible for up to $1,000 in bonus bets coming right back to you. It makes it a lot easier to swallow a loss on your first bet. It's $1,000 in bonus bets back to your account at fanduel.com slash locked on. You can see it here below me on YouTube. It makes things super simple, and it allows you to get in the action now before you get into football season. Get your, your feet underneath you, and I think a lot of folks are going to dig that. So please go. Check it out for $1,000 in bonus bets eligibility. You can find that at fanduel.com slash locked on. Over at FanDuel, the official sportsbook partner of the MLB, the NBA, and most importantly, your NFL. Now, this is an experiment for us uh, going back and forth on who would you do? Uh, Recognizing talent on other rosters that the Chiefs have to game plan around all season long, but also what would they do were they in Kansas City if you could take them away? So now we move on to Denver, and and I kind of teased it at the top. I really feel like the Raiders are set for a fall back and we all know that the Chargers are going to charge themselves into mediocrity. So what does that leave? The Broncos could be a team with Sean Payton taking the reins there and honestly making wholesale changes about just how bad the culture had gotten in Denver. You might see them take a step up. So it's, it's not the, the seller kind of scenario that we might've been talking about a year ago. Yeah. And I'm really curious to see where you go with the Denver Broncos because this is a situation where they have talent, but do they have a lot of young talent that you really want to take? Or is it older guys? Because remember at the top of the show, we were talking about how this is for the future, not necessarily just this one year. Yeah, and that that's fair. Um, I'll let you go first this time because I think you know where I'm going. 
I know this isn't going to make a lot of sense to some people because of the positional group that Kansas City has right now. But if I'm being honest, I think the only player that I really want on their roster is probably Pat Sertan Jr. You take him and you put him on this roster, good luck throwing the ball against Kansas City for the next five years between him yeah. and Trent McDuffie. And that's without Snead coming back. And I still hope they bring Snead back. But that's without Snead back. That's yeah, and a lot of still people... Still, it's would... a terrific game. I'm sorry. No, you're absolutely right. And a lot of people have been asking about, you know, why wouldn't Snead be back? Well, usually a player going into their last season of their contract, if the team had significant need and want to bring them back, they would have had a, a contract worked out. Now, that can still happen before camp. That is not off the table in any way, shape, or form. But the alternate scenario is you want to see one more year of production out of that player before you decide. What that does well, is it opens up the Chiefs for if Legereus balls out in a contract year, he's going to get more offer than they're going to want to spend. And that's it's also possible. possible. I would also make an argument that's also possible. They're looking at their scenario, they're looking at their cap space and they're saying, okay, we need to get Chris Jones done before we extend anybody else. That also makes a little bit of sense to me. So it could be that it gets done before camp because Chris Jones gets done and then maybe Snee gets a contract extension. So we'll see if that's the direction they go. But regardless of Snead, you put Pat Sertan Jr. on this roster, good luck throwing the ball. Yeah. It's going to be very tough to throw the ball against Kansas City. That's going to win a lot of ball games. Yeah, I mean, that's that's a nearly impenetrable secondary group at that point where you have to go deep every time because the weakest link is probably second-year safety, Brian Cook. Well, it's definitely going to be point. safety. It's yeah. definitely going to be safety. I mean, if, if Sneed's your nickel with Sertan and McDuffie outside of him, that's crazy. Jalen Watson and Josh Williams are your backups. That's crazy talk. Like, yeah. That could be back to, like, the Marty days of having a top 5 to 10 defense every single year until all those guys are, you know, 40. So I, I agree. That's where I would have gone if I had gone first as well. So let me pick up the scraps here. Um, <clears throat> I mean, there's always the obligatory. I, I'd go take Mike Burton and bring him right back. But that's just me. Never mind me, folks. Uh, but <laughs> if you take if you a look at talent, one person, you wouldn't do that. Probably not. Love you, Mike, but still. Um, You'd really want to, but you wouldn't do it. I, I know. So go ahead. Who would you do? But when it comes down to it, who can who can make a difference? And unlike your your last segment where you just wanted to destroy the Chargers, I actually want to improve this roster. So where's one of the position groups that you could do that? It's, it's not a pass rush from this group. I'll tell you that. But it is interesting. Jared Judy's a guy that can play inside and outside. I think they have a ton of slot wide receivers, so it makes it a little bit difficult for me. But he is the best of that bunch, in my opinion. Uh, I do like Cam Sutton. Or Cortland Sutton, sorry, wrong Sutton. Uh, but the injury is pause. No, a year ago, I would have said Cortland Sutton because he could be the X that the Chiefs need. He's still dynamic enough to play in the read offense. Two years ago, Actually, is that what it was before the injury? Okay, because he's just coming point, back from last year. Yeah, but yeah, I'm with you. At this point, it's got to be Judy, and uh, unfortunately, uh, Judy's another guy. Uh, I'm double checking it literally right now because he is. Of the Chiefs receiver group, the small guys, he would be the tallest. He is 6012. So he's got, I think, a quarter inch on Kadarius Tony. Uh, and that just kind of feeds into the whole thing that we're going to be talking about, uh, I'm sure, later down the line is what's Andy Reid's type of wide receiver these days. But that would be another guy that gives you another weapon. You could spread the ball around. It doesn't have to be a high volume in terms of reps. Yeah. Patrick Mahomes would never be lacking targets. And I think that's what sets you up for longevity is just give him targets over and over and over. So since we did it with the Chargers, if you had to pick somebody to just destroy the Broncos, not even necessarily improve the Chiefs, who would you take? I did the last one. I'll let you have this one. Okay. That's um, that's a good question uh, because as good as these two players are, Taking them away doesn't destroy that team, I don't think. Maybe Sertan. I will tell you, like, just to take them away, it would probably be Wilson because you have to have a quarterback. And Jared Stidham, I don't think, is it. Uh, well, who else do they have back there? Ben DiNucci, great offseason. Don't think he's turning that franchise around. But I'll tell you that the sneaky guy that I think holds it together on what is um, a not only an aging but a sliding defense, sick since the departure of uh, Vic Fangio, uh, it's Justin Simmons. 
I think his leadership and his ability tears that defense apart if you take him off of there. So if you just want to destroy Denver, take Justin Simmons. In. Yeah, I, I don't think I can get with Wilson just because it's Wilson. <laughs> and I don't think he'd be adding anything. And I don't think he'd really destroy the team there that much. I mean, I, yeah, it's going to be worse, but destroy the way he played last year. I think that you can get really close to that with the guys with somebody else. Yeah. Who you bring in, whoever you could else you could bring in. The other one I would say, and just a backup for me, I'm going to throw out a name, Javante Williams. And it's mm. not necessarily, I really like what Pacheco does, obviously, for Kansas City. And I really like Jerry Judy. I think that's a great pick for you. But Javante Williams is a, is a running back that I think has a, a chance at a phenomenal career. The question is, can he come back from injury? That's the one reason that I wouldn't put him on that list right now. But I think that that could be an interesting one as well. Yeah, it's just a running back. I don't know. I understand that. Day. <laughs> it's just a running back. And I'm sorry, it, all you running funny. back. <laughs> all you running I'm back. I'm saying it. I'm saying it, and you're saying it's just a running back. That's funny. <laughs> I'm sorry for all of you ex running backs and running back parents. Uh, it's just the position just doesn't have the impact that it used to as much as I wanted to. It's run game, not running back. But anyway, the next one up. How do you hurt the Pirates? out there in Vegas? That's the next question we'll hit right after this. Okay, same scenario. Uh, take away from a division rival, make this team better. How do you go about that? And, and what's the longevity of it? Maybe that's what we have to do. Let's let's do this. I'll go first, and we'll talk about the scenario that we've been talking about forever, like put them on this roster. What does the future look like year after year after year? Uh, it's not a question to me, just like I went with the chargers. It's Max Crosby. It's, it's fulfill that pass rusher edge position so that you can hurt every other quarterback that you come up against. Crosby has quietly come on. I personally, I don't know how you feel, but I love the rivalry between him and Mahomes. You put him on the same roster. And that I think gives you that, that Frank Clark type edge and nastiness and attitude, but with a player that can actually back it up on the field. And I think that's probably the balance that I'm looking for. Yeah. And I really can't argue with you at all. I think that that would be the one guy that I would bring. I, I like Crosby. I like what he's brought to the Raiders. Uh, I think he's a great player. And if you look at how things are going for this team, that is the one position that they really need to upgrade at is defensive end or pass rush in some way, shape, or form, whether it's defensive end or defensive tackle. Picking Max Crosby from the Raiders is really the only player that makes sense. That's You look at the rest of their roster, and we, when we talk about this and when we brought it up, it was longevity. It wasn't just a single year or a couple of years. It was longevity, and that's what really takes away some of the other players that they have. Yeah, that's, that's I think – the bottom line. And I, I'm still focused on how do you make Kansas City better by whatever selections yep. you do. Chiefs have to game plan around Max Crosby every single time. Um, you know, like the last conversation we had, Sertan, you know what he's out there for. You know you're going to have a harder time completing passes and getting big chunk plays over there, right? That doesn't mean that you have well, to game plan around him. Max Crosby, you have to put him top of the list on the game plan and how you're going to execute your offense. And I think that's a bigger impact. No, and I agree with you, but I would also say on Sertan, you have to game plan probably that you're not going to be throwing to his side of the field more than likely unless you have spe specific things and you can tell the defense that they're running in is maybe zone. Maybe then you're going to be throwing at that guy. But generally speaking, you're probably going to be thrown away from Sertan. So you're right, you're not going to game plan the same way, but I think there's a little bit of game plan there. Now, when you start talking Crosby, you absolutely have to game plan for him. But my curiosity is going into this season – how is Jawan Taylor going to deal with Crosby? How is he going to look? Wiley had good games against Crosby for the most part because Wiley knew him. Can Taylor right. step up into that situation and do the same thing against a guy that he's going to be facing twice a year for the next four or five years? The big thing for me is going to be the punch. Um, Max uses his length well, and he's, he's strong in the upper body. Juwan's feet are markedly better than Andrew Wiley's and should keep him yep. in position. So he's got to be able to absorb that energy. And, and I think that will take a little bit of getting used to. I'll have to go look and see how many times he may have actually lined up against Max Crosby in the past. But I think that's going to be it. He'll be positionally ready. Can he sustain the power and that's and take that energy in? I think the first meeting is going to be a little bit interesting. I think after that, he'll be able to make the adjustment. Because in the end, 
I think athleticism beats out overall power at the end of the day. And I know there are a lot of people that are probably sitting there going, you were taking Max Crosby. There's one person on this roster that I would take over Max Crosby, and you're crazy for not taking him. Again, we said longevity. But if we're looking at it from the perspective of what is the best option for the Chiefs for the next couple of seasons, maybe this year and next year, the answer may change. Yeah, uh, I think that's that's pretty apparent. I mean, we've only spent the entire offseason talking about uh, every veteran wide receiver that has come on the market. So if you had the opportunity, why wouldn't you take the guy that even through the best years of Tyreek Hill in Kansas City, I still had Devontae Adams above him? That's very, very rare. So why not? If you're talking a single year or the end of this contract, I think it's two left for him. Next two seasons, why you would have to go take Devontae Adams is probably uh, easily the best player on that roster overall. Yeah. I think his contract has three more years, maybe four even. Mm. Uh, it was a longer deal in, in the last couple of years he's not going to get to. But uh, for definitely the next two years, I would take Devontae Adams. And if he doesn't slow down this year, probably the next three. I just think he's probably the best wide receiver in football still. I think he was the best wide receiver in football when he was with Green Bay. I still think he is, though he's not going to get that credit because of who he's playing with. Yeah. That's that's what it comes down. It's it's going to be, uh, I think, a year here where we're going to see Denver and Vegas switch. We're going to we're going to see that flip coming. Uh, we are going to give our season long, our divisional uh, projections, our predictions for the season for who finishes in what place. All that's coming when we get into training camp. In the meantime, we're setting all that up by taking a look at the other rosters the Chiefs have to play repeatedly. Later in the offseason, before we get to camp, we'll take a look at the rest of the schedule, too. Obviously, there are a lot of big names on this schedule this season. A lot of teams in the East that we're going to have to look at. But we start at home with the AFC West. So who's the players that you'd like to see, A, taken off of their roster, but B, added to this roster? Who can you give enough respect to that you have to game plan around? That's what we want to talk about. We'd love to hear your opinions here on the YouTube comments. Please like, sub, and hit that bell if you're not. And also, on the audio platforms, you can hit it in all the review sites for Spotify, for Apple. You can get directly to us on the text line at 816-357-8781. Get in the action there. Uh, I'm excited about what comes next and see the evolution of these teams because behind the Chiefs, I don't think the Chiefs are going anywhere. They'll, they'll win this division again. I am absolutely certain of it. The flipping around on the ranks below is going to be really telling about what the future is for the second half of Mahomes' contract until there's an extension. And I think that goes into the planning that Brett Beach and Andy Reid have to do. So there's a lot of team, overall team building things that are going to happen this year in the way that the other teams in the division evolve. And I think we got to keep an eye on that. We absolutely do. And I think that when you start looking at how this division is going to play out this season, and really the biggest question mark, I don't think that there's a question mark whether or not the Raiders are going to go back down. I think they will. I, I Truly do not believe in Josh McDaniels. He had it last year to really show that he has changed his tune. He hasn't. He's the same guy that he was in Denver several seasons ago. He may have changed a little bit, but not enough to where it's actually going to make a difference. And he's going to take that team down with him, I think. Uh, he's the reason, he is the sole reason, I think, that Darren Waller isn't in Oakland or isn't in Las Vegas anymore. And when you're talking about a star player that had no intention of going elsewhere, yet the coach makes him leave because of something as stupid as announcing his wedding. <laughs> I, how do you think that that coach is going to do with other players? I mean, yeah. that was one of the, I don't know that he was, he obviously wasn't the best player on their roster, but easily top five. I, I don't know. You could make an argument for maybe even top three, yes. but you start looking at the Raiders, I think they're going down. The big question mark in this division, to me, is it's not the Chargers. I think the Chargers are going to do what the Chargers have been doing. I don't think they're getting over the hump, although Kellen Moore is going to present a little bit of a different situation than we've seen in the past. But when you start looking at it, to me, it's really going to come down to what happens with Sean Payton in Denver. How is he going to affect this division? How is he going to put his stamp on that team? And how is he going to transfer going from what that team was last year to what they're going to be in the future? And how does he deal with it with Russell Wilson? It's going to be a process. And we'll have updates you for you as we go through uh, this, this preseason and certainly once we get into training camp. 
But be with us tomorrow. You every day, as I know you'll be here, please. Everyone else, make sure we're five days a week, all season long. Make sure you're with us tomorrow as we start our deep dive positional reviews. Every player on the roster at a given position, we're going to go through them all. Who could make a surge? Who's going to challenge for the starting role? Uh, some of those we know. Some of them we don't. We're going to go through position by position and give you all the details as we head into camp time. So be with us tomorrow. Thanks for spending your time with us today. We very much appreciate it. Like, sub, and hit that bell. Check out another Lockdown Show for your next listen. Have a good one, and we'll talk to you tomorrow.